Who's swearing now? <laughs> Okay, so we're live on YouTube. Let's open the floodgates. We're now live on YouTube and Zoom. So we'll just give it a minute now and wait for everybody to join in because we know everybody has been waiting all morning for this one to start, to really run in and, and jump on this one. So we'll give it till one minute past. I can see it's already filling up, so that's good. And hello, wherever you are. So if you're watching through YouTube, a big hello. You're joined by me, Dave Davis, CTO DVS. Matthew Hearn, Matthew Oakley, and Neil Foster, three of the best people you'll ever hope to meet, especially for Moptex anyway. Um, today, we're going to talk about long-range protections, specifically their fibre sense and their radar offering, uh, Spotter RF. This is more specialised detection equipment, so not the traditional uh, PIR microwave uh, beam sets that they're synonymous with and, you know, and everybody knows them for their sensing technology. If you don't know Optex by now, then you should know Optex, the leading sensing company in the world, the best optics you can possibly invest in. This is a different technology for those sites that require sort of I'd probably be right in saying it's a higher end offering. So a really secure, really high end offering, very versatile, but obviously needs a lot more time, thought and resource put behind it before you deploy it. And obviously the cost is higher than a standard PIR, for instance. Um, so we'll just give it one more 30 seconds. Now, just wait till one minute past for everyone. Someone just text me going, I'm just logging in now. So I, I'll wait for you, don't worry. You should be in by now. Okay, fine. So again, you're joined by Matthew, Matthew, Neil, and myself. So again, if you haven't watched part one and part two, then they're live on YouTube now. So I suggest you go back and watch them. They're around sort of entry to mid-level product. Gives you a good overview in what Optex can offer. Their product range is very broad and very professional um, has a price point for everybody and there really is a, a device or a detector for every application that you can hope to meet and today part three which is the final part it's like a uh, hot shots in there part three and it's like the final one and everybody wants a part four so we were just discussing before we started this of what we can do as a part four so we can re we can retain that um webinar content together because it's been really fun delivering this with you guys the two we've done before this have delivered a lot of value back into the channel. So I can't thank you all enough for being part of this, being very professionally delivered. And we've had some great feedback around you guys. So thank you guys for letting me be part of it and for coming on to co-host. Um, I think on that note, I'm gonna hand over to you, Math, if you can, or you're already sharing your screen as you say there. So we'll go through the slide deck as normal. If I got anything to add, I'll jump in. I'm sure Neil's got lots to add in his professional opinion. So um, we'll all just sort of jump in. And for those of you um, that don't know Matthew, look at him, check out his lovely flowery shirt today. So give Matthew a big hug and a kiss. Um, so we'll see, we'll hand over to you, Math, and then uh, we'll go from there. So thank you very much and I'll jump in as required. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Dave. Uh, hello, uh, good uh, afternoon and welcome to you all. This is, as Dave said, part three of three of Optex external security detection applications. Uh, and again, thank you to David and DBS for all your support. And as he said, all three videos will be available on the, their YouTube channel, so check those out. Uh, today we'll cover 5% fence line and uh, the radar range. There's a chat box for any questions and there is never a silly question, never ever a silly question. That's a good but point, I should have mentioned that. <laughs> So we hope and trust you'll find this educational and informative. Uh, and I'll pass you over to my learned colleague, uh, Mr. Neil Foster. Thank you. So we're just going to go through uh, very quickly. We've covered some of these products already, but the multi-layered concept that we do at Optex, the good thing with working with Optex uh, through DVS is we can supply any of these products to you. Um, looking from the external detection, so we do, uh, if you haven't actually got a perimeter fence line that we're going to be concentrating on today, we can actually do the active beam solutions or we can do the red scan solutions. Those can give you both an invisible wall of detection. So as soon as anybody tries to get onto the site, you can get an activation from that. We then come back to the fence line. Um, this is what we're concentrating on today. One of the products, anybody cutting or climbing a fence line, we can give you an activation for that through the fiber census system. Coming back to the infill detection, we've got the SIPs, which everyone kind of knows uh, Optex because of the Redwall SIP product range. 
there's also the laser products and then the short range products, which we went through on uh, uh, episode one, let's call it, uh, the first uh, <laughs> first webinar that we did. Uh, coming back into the building detection, uh, the fiber census product that we're going to discuss today can actually be used for um, wall protection as well. So if you've got any warehouses, data centers, cash handling sites, that kind of thing that you need detection on that product can actually be installed in the fabric of the building. And also the red scan product that we've already covered can be used for that application. Mm -hmm. We then come to the internal products and the uh, the red scan, uh, which can be used for internal applications, and then we've got the uh, the big brother, the uh, the spotter RF radar product. So if you're looking for large area coverage, then that radar solution is absolutely fantastic for that. So that's a full product range that we can offer. Um, any of these products are available through DVS. So if right. you've got any inquiries, come back to Dave and the team. Come back to ourselves. We can help you out and support you with that. The, uh, the products that we're concentrating on today, one is the fiber optic system. So fiber census is um, fence mounted detection. So it's a fiber optic cable that you install on the fence line. So anywhere that you're looking for a cut or a climb activation for somebody trying to get onto the site, then this product works ideal for that. You've got the product which was actually originally designed for United States uh, Air Force. Um, so it's got the highest level of approval in the US, um, covers all the military applications, nuclear applications. Um, we've had this product since 2012 off the top of my head. Um, since then we've brought it in and we've got some, some of the products are CPNI approved for UK government applications. If you've got any of those kind of applications that you want to look at, feel free to come back to myself, come back to Matt. We, yeah. can, uh, we can give you the details on, on which products can be used for, for which applications if you work in the CPNI environment. Okay. Product is uh, very, very versatile, so it can be used on a little, lot of different fence types. Obviously, we've got a lot of fence types on the right hand side there, but predominantly uh, it was actually designed for chain link fencing. There's thousands of kilometers of fence line around United States Air Force bases in the state where we've got chain link fencing around, which the product was originally designed on. But it's not limited to that. It can be used on weld mesh. It can be used on traditional palisade fencing that you see on there. We can do all sorts of different weird and wonderful things. So if you've got a concrete wall, you want detection of somebody trying to curl, uh, climb over the top of that, then we can use it as a fence topping solution on there as well. Um, we can also then actually bring it back and install it in the fabric of the buildings, which we've already discussed. So anybody trying to do a, a grosser track and break through the wall of the, the fabric of that building, we can give you an activation that way for us. That comes really nicely into the data center applications, the, the storage, the banks, the vaults kind of applications. So a little bit on the technology, it's a fiber optic technology. So we actually install a fiber optic cable around the fence line and we just then transmit a laser light through that. So in its nature, because we're only transmitting the laser light through a fiber optic cable, it can be used in any kind of intrinsically safe environment. So there's no additional cost in this product. If you are looking for intrinsically safe, by its nature, it can be used really nicely in that, in that environment and also for chemical depots as well, which is something to bear in mind. A lot of products, as soon as you start mentioning intrinsically safe, there's a, instantly a, a cost increase in that. But with this, it's, it's, it's intrinsically safe by its nature. Mm. Um, the good points are it's also immune to any kind of a lightning strike. So obviously putting a, any kind of cable onto a fence line, a fence line can easily attract a lightning strike if there's lightning strikes in the area. Um, there's no chance with that being a fiber optic cable of it being induced into the, into the cable, transmitted up to the cable to the alarm processing units. Uh, likewise, it doesn't radiate or it doesn't pick up any electrical interference, radar interference or radio interference. Um, so with that, ideal for a telecom sites. Again, nothing's going to be uh, induced into that cable and cause any, cause any issues with it. Systems, fiber optic cables, corrosion free. Uh, typically, you get 20 year service life with it. So when we install it on the fence line, it's installed in the UV resistant uh, conduit. Um, you'll get 20 year service life on it. If you, at the time of install, you happen to get a nick on the fiber optic cable, there's no chance of any water ingress into that cable, which is going to cause any, any, any issues because it's just an inert glass that's in there. Um, if anybody's actually quoting fence mounted systems, one of the interesting things is to actually have a look at the, uh, the small print on, on the typical uh, copper based solutions. They usually have a stipulation in there that after every four to five years, you should actually remove the cable and refit it. That's kind of like a little bit of a hidden cost. With the fiber optic solution, no problem with that. You put it in 20 years down the line, it'll still be working exactly the same as it was on day one. 
Um, the other thing is it can't actually be, if, if you do install it in a, in a wall, embed it in a wall, there's no way of actually detecting it because there's no, there's no metal element in it. It's just an inert glass that's in there. So works fantastic in those kind of uh, environments. And then you've got minimal maintenance. You just need to keep on top of the APU, make sure everything's clean on the, uh, on the connectors and the system's just going to sit and do its job. I've got a question. Somebody's asked a question. Okay. If the cable was nicked, like as or damaged, is it yep. as easy as just splicing that with a new part, or do you have to replace that length? Yeah, no. There's two different ways that you can do it. So you can literally just put a fusion splice on it um, and splice it back together, or we do do what's classed as a repair kit. So you'll get a uh, ST connectors on there, so um, adhesive uh, ST connectors that you can use as ST connectors and a feed through coupler, and just put that in an encapsulation. Okay. Um, so it's 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 easy enough to repair. A lot of people think of fiber as being a dark art. Um, it's really not that bad. Uh, we've got tech support guys who can uh, assist with training, assist with technical issues on that. So yeah, the, if there's any questions like that, feel free to come back to us. I guess that'd be the same as if you need to extend it as well. So they put a new bit of fence in um, that like comes out further than it did previously. You could use the same joint kit or splice a new piece in exactly the same way as a repair, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. It's very easy to extend. Um, with some of the bigger systems, the 25 zone systems that actually use a fiber backbone, we have applications where it might be a phased project that's going in. So we could put a, a system in, then use a backbone cable to extend that. So it's quite flexible in the way that it can actually be extended and uh, adopted as the sites change. That's all something that can be taken into account. Well, thank you. No problem. So the, the system is difficult to defeat. So difficult to defeat as in it can't be detected. So if you have got it embedded in a wall, if you have got it on a mounted on a fence line, then there's no way of actually picking up that that cable's there. Uh, even when it's installed in the UV resistant conduit, you can't sense it, you can't detect it in any way. So it's very, very discreet. Um, it is designed for harsh environments. So the airport application, top right hand corner, we've got uh, multiple airport applications, US Air Force use it as standard. Uh, likewise, if you've got any petrochemical, any hazardous uh, environments, it can be installed really nicely on there. Um, any noisy environments, so again, airports, a lot of radar signals that are around there, a lot of radio communication. There's never any chance of that being uh, taken into the system and causing any false alarms. We're just totally immune from anything like that. And when you look at the actual service life of the system, we've got 20 year service life. So if you actually look at the life cost of the system, so uh, the installation cost divided that out over the service life of 20 years, it actually works out to be one of the lowest cost systems that are available. Hmm. So typically we're looking for somebody trying to cut or climb a fence. Um, you can actually use it for people trying to um, dig underneath fence lines. The one thing that you need to bear in mind is if you've got a fence line that just runs around to loose earth, then yeah, somebody can dig that out and potentially get underneath that. Typically, uh, higher security applications, your fence line will actually drop down into a, a hard surface or even a concrete plinth that will be installed around that site. So we can give activations for anyone cutting, climbing or, or trying to crawl under a fence line itself. Um, as we've already said, UV resistant uh, cabling, resistant to lightning strikes, electrical interference so is ideal for fence mounted applications. Uh, we can go long insensitive lead in. So uh, back in the days, many years ago, when I was on the installation side, we used to get applications for ammunition stores uh, on quarries, for example. That was always a hard one of how you're going to get the power out into the field to get to that, uh, you know, steel hook that's storing the uh, the explosives. Uh, how we're going to make it intrinsically safe. This solution is ideal for this. Put the electronics, the alarm processing unit, in the nice clean, dry comms room back at the office block. Just run a fibre cable up there out into the quarry to where you get to the explosives store and then put the sensing cable on intrinsically safe no power requirement ideal for that sort of solution um, moving on from that embedding it in a wall or the fabric of the building there's there's 35 data centers we've done in the uk on one project um, can be installed on bank jewelry vaults uh, the hat and garden there is a reference we didn't have a system in there um, <laughs> things might have been different if we did have a system in there but that's the kind of thing that if you've got that um, cable either embed it in the wall at the time of installation because again 20 year service life on it you probably get longer if it's actually embedded in a conduit within a concrete wall there's never any anything that's going to be able to damage it so it'd be an ideal for that solution or you could just put galve conduit on the fabric of the building and install it if it's a, a, a retrofit the other thing with the fiber is rather than just making a sensing element so trying to detect fence lines or fabric of buildings we could actually use the system to protect fiber network cables themselves. 
So if you've got a fiber network cable, you've got dark side fiber on it, so fiber that's not being used, we can actually make those unused fibers a sensing element. So if you've got a fiber optic cable running between buildings, you're concerned that somebody's gonna try and tap into that lifter hatch that's outside, try and tap into that data, or just try and damage that cable, we can actually make it a sensing element and give you an activation for that, which you can then use optical cutoff switches, et cetera, to, to, to stop the data transmission on that. So it's very flexible in, in, in the way that it can actually be deployed. Looking at the ARM processing units, uh, so the unit on the right-hand side is actually an FD322, so that's our entry-level ARM processing unit. Two zones are standard. Um, typically used for wall applications. But we have a series of these alarm processing units that look very similar, um, single zone or dual zone alarm processing units. If you're looking at products like the 3.3 three series, the 3.4 series, they can actually be used for fence and wall applications. Mm. Um, the difference between the 3.3 three and the 3.4, 3.3, three three, three, you go straight out of the output on that alarm processing unit directly into the sensing element. If you've got that application on that quarry, you want an insensitive lead in for any distance up to 20 kilometers with this, you can actually use the 3 4 series. You put that insensitive fiber cable on, you then splice it or use ST connectors to put it onto a sensing element, and that's the sensing element that sits out in the field. So it's highly adjustable, high performance. We've got a lot of uh, filters that we can use in there. So uh, we don't just look at um, cut events and climb events and then alter the gain on the system. We can actually drill it down and look at particular frequencies to filter out frequencies from causing any kind of false activation on there. Um, and then we can use the, the system in three different ways. So for the alarm outputs, we can do relay contact outputs up in the top right hand corner there, that alarm processing unit. We can have TCP IP versions, so you can put it onto the, uh, the, the CCTV network and get the alarm activations going out that way. Or we also have a third option, which is FSN, which is a fiber secure network. So yeah, just have another couple of SD connection ports on there and you actually run a fiber around the site, which will take all the alarm activations back to a software package called Fiber Commander that gives you all the control of these alarm processing units. Mm -hmm. We then move on to the five series, the 500 series. So these can either be four, eight or 25 zones. So if you are looking at a larger site, um, you're looking for a few more zones out there, then this system works out very cost competitive for that. Can be used on fence mount. You can be used on wall applications. Um, if you're looking at applications, you need to bear in mind that all different fence uh, types react in all different ways. Um, the good thing about this system is you can have a zone that runs on 50 meters of palisade fencing, for example. And then if you've got 50 meters of wall next to it, you want to do a wall topping system, you can do that as well. You get the same adjustment on it. So you can look at the frequencies, block out any background frequencies. The way the systems work is we look at the spectral data, which is a speckled light pattern that comes back into the alarm processing units and we can interrogate those for any false alarms. We can play around with an engineering software, which is a modeler software, which allows us to tweak uh, sensitivity settings on it and then make sure that we're going to maintain any capture rate for potential cuts and potential climbs. Um, this system, again, ideal insensitive leading cable that's available with it. So you run a fiber backbone around the site. There's no power requirement that's out there. Again, a lot of competitive systems, you actually need power out in the field for that with this. There's nothing put that uh, alarm processing unit that sat there in a rack in the comms room in a security lodge and then just run that fiber network around the site. That fiber network doesn't have to just be dedicated to the alarm processing unit. So if you are running a fiber network around that site to get your camera images back, then you can just use a combined fiber that will allow you to do both the network for the uh, CCTV and the network for the uh, fence mounted system as well. Okay. And again, this system can either give you uh, TCP outputs or we can actually do relay modules on there as well. So you can just do relay contact outputs and take it back to the control equipment. And there's a full uh, matrix that's there. If anybody's got any uh, any questions on the specifics of the alarm process and units, um, a lot of the time we'll get people asking for a budget cost. The main thing with this is you do need to know the perimeter fence line length. You need to make sure that it is um, continuity of the fabric because different fabrics will require different zones. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be taken into account with the with the zone length. So if anybody's got any projects, please feel free to come back to us. We're more than happy to do budget costing for you and then we can tailor it depending on which land processing unit is going to be best for that application. Okay. So that's the, uh, the the fiber, the fence mounted system. We're now looking at the uh, the long range product. So with the long range product, uh, radar solution. So the panels that are down there in the bottom right hand corner, 
we can do anything from 125 meter by 40 meters right the way up to 1.4 by 1.3 kilometers with that so mm -hmm. ideal for large open sites um, even where you want protection that's actually beyond the fence line uh, we'll come on to that in a second of what we mean by that but you can actually extend detection uh, beyond the fence rather than just detecting after after somebody's actually broken into that site so with the system, we use the radar technology that actually uh, tracks the target. We can then give camera, um, PTZ cameras uh, information. So where they need to spin round to, where they need to zoom into, and then you're getting live data out of it all the time. So as somebody enters a site, camera spins round, zooms into that location. As they then walk around that site, the radar panel just keeps on controlling the camera and they'll track anybody as they walk around that site. Um, system is very, very reliable, so it'll work in all weather conditions. So we've got test footage, which is actually put in, uh, whether it be an optical camera or thermal camera versus the radar technology. Radar technology will continue to detect and continue to control the camera, even if the camera can't actually see the target through the fog or the snow that might be on that site. Some people might think, well, what's the point in that? But when that target actually moves more towards the site that you're trying to protect and they come closer in, then your camera's already t zoomed in on them. It's already tracking them around that site. Uh, the little GUI interface that we give you will actually show you the information of where the target is, where that target's moving around. So it's all just about having as much data recorded as possible uh, up to the point that you can actually see that person. Very, very cost effective solution. So yeah, there is a, an equipment cost of it. Some people might actually uh, need to sit down when they look at the cost. But when you actually look at combining that into a project cost, I've actually looked at sites in the past where we've looked at conventional active beams covering part of a disused airfield. Um, when it actually came to looking at all the project costs, so on any of these projects, you've got the equipment cost, you've then got actually the civil costs, so the cost of putting duct in, putting power in, putting concrete bases in for active beams, for et cetera. Um, with the radar solution on that in particular project, we covered 100% uh, of a air, disused airfield uh, for the same cost as it would have cost to put in like 600 meters of active beams, just purely because there was some infrastructure there that we could use. The good thing with the radar panel is if there's any infrastructure there, it might be that you hang it on buildings that are, have already got power to, already got infrastructure into, and then have it looking out towards the fence line. So um, although sometimes people look at the equipment cost, think it's a little bit more pricey, when you actually look at the overall project cost, it often does work out a lot more cost effective mm -hmm. to use the radar kind of technology. The other thing that you've got is the fact that you're covering such a large area and then combining it with PTZ cameras. If you try to do the same with other technologies, again, it's going to be cost prohibitive. So the radar will actually work a lot better than that. Mm -hmm. And again, high performance in it. So we can actually filter out a lot of background uh, potential false alarm causes. So you can put, fil fil put, sorry, excuse me. You can put filters on the system. So you can look at um, the speed of a target, the, the direction of a target, the actual amount of displacement. So how far a target has moved from its original location, the travel distance of a target, and you start building all those filters up and very, very quickly, you get a very high performance, reliable system. So typical scenarios, anything from electricity, uh, utility sites, border protection. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of border protection in the UK at this moment in time, but uh, those are kind of the worldwide yeah. uh, applications, right the way through to ports, um, high net worth. So high-end residentials, we've got a few high-end residentials that are out there that we've got radars installed on. Anything where you might be looking sort of 100 meter plus in detection, um, works very, very reliably for, tracks the target as they move around. Um, we can also use the system for drone detection as well, which is something which is a little bit more up and coming at this moment in time. So mm -hmm. lots of different applications. We can have it looking across water. So fish farms, that kind of application that have been used for those. So very, very versatile. The GUI interface that you get um, on here, we've got a, a map interface um, on there. You've got a little snail trail that's up there. So like just off to the center, just above center of the screen. Um, so what the radar system will do is as it picks up a target, it will actually give you the little crosshair to show you exactly where that target is. As that moves around, it'll then generate a little snail trail. So it'll show you exactly where that target has been on that uh, map interface. Um, top left hand corner there, you get the camera image. So it'll pull up the camera that's associated with that to show you what's actually happening on there. And then down in the bottom left hand corner there, you get the track information. So that's used for 
being able to filter out tracks you can use those you can interrogate those to find out how much somebody's actually moved what speed they've been moving at what direction so if you do get a false activation you got all that information very very quickly you can filter mm -hmm. that out and you can get a very very reliable system Typical applications on the left-hand side there, we've got fixed installation, so a camera column that might be there, PTZ on the top, and you just fix the radar panels onto it. You've got the radar panels as one part of the system, and you've then got what we call a NEO, which is like the brains of the system. Just a network device, so you just need a network between the two. Um, mm -hmm. Other applications are we do do mobile installations, so you can actually just have a, a ruggedized um, NEO that can be out in the field, um, stick a radar panel or a couple of radar panels on there and the camera on there. So when we start looking at the, the radar detection coverage, obviously it covers a massive area, but what you can actually do with it is control exactly what it sees. So we just look at GPS locations on a, on a map overview. We can then draw in. So the green area can be your detection zone. And what we could do is say outside that fence line, we actually want a non-detection zone. So we want to totally ignore everything that's happening outside there. Or it might be that you actually say, no, what we want to do is we want to do a tracking and alerting zone inside. So somebody breaks into the site, the camera tracks that person, but what we also do is create an alert so we can trigger that offsite, we can notify a guard, whatever that might be. Mm. In certain environments, you also want to track if somebody's actually outside the site. So because the radar covers beyond the fence line, you can set it up to say outside that fence line, I just want the camera to spin around and I just want to track that person. And that's useful for sites where uh, typically more high security sites, but where somebody might be trying to come and have a look at a site and suss out, you know, how they're going to actually potentially break into that site. You've got the camera tracking them. You've got that video evidence of what they've actually done on there. Okay. Looking at a typical install, um, again, with this system, it's fantastic. Keep it back to the building, keep it back to the existing infrastructure, and then have it looking out, looking across those areas. So it works out very, very cost effective. These ellipses on, that you can see on here are typical radar detection paths. What we can actually do for you is if you've got a site, we can actually load up a reference, uh, install the site details onto a NEO, then start loading in the different radar panels to show you the anticipated detection that we'll actually get for those sites. Along with um, the general person detection or vehicle detection, we can also do drone detection as well. So the static panel detection fields, uh, basically the panel there on the on the right hand side, just have it angled up slightly and then we can pick up drones. So we can give you a detection, we can track a zone, we can then fade that information out to other devices that might be jamming devices, might be a, a capture device that's going to actually cap capture that, that, that drone. Um, with the technology, with the algorithms that are built into it, we can distinguish between a drone and a bird, for example. So very accurate information. So we can do that in either static panels or what we can actually do is a 360 version there as well. So again, with the 360 version, we're going to give you a 500 metre radius of detection. So it's going to look 500 metres all the way around and then it's going to look 500 metres up into the sky as well. So if you've got any kind of site that you're looking for radar detection, or looking for drone detection on, that radar solution works very, very effectively in those environments, just deploying that one piece of kit and it covers a large area for you and I'll give you the tracks. So that's kind of a, an overview on, on the products. Um, if you can kind of remember uh, us, um, DVS, and then remember all the products that you can see on there. <laughs> if you've got any inquiries, come back to DVS, come back to us. We're more than happy to help. Um, all of our contact details are on there or contact us through DVS. I'd say I've uh, been privileged to be part of a couple of installations using the Spotter RF product in di different applications now. And I, you know, say how powerful it is. And like you said, the time saving it can offer for the civil works when you can just power it up, whether it's on a tower, on a building, and then beam them back wirelessly over standard Wi Fi products. It really does give that flexibility, but it offers something yeah. that products don't do. Like, you know, you're capturing a lot of area. Whereas typically a thermal camera or something, obviously you get weather issues or potential blind spots, et cetera. It really is a technology that opens up a whole new world of security offerings. So I can vouch for this product. It really is a, a very high end product with once you understand how it goes together, that, that uh, you know, it sort of does go together quite nicely and, a, and there is training available. I think the course is mandatory, isn't it? If you want to use this technology, then obviously there is a training course, dedicated training course that you need to attend so that you can deliver the best to your customer. But all these different options that you can offer really does sort of hopefully plant these seeds that people can let grow into these big oak trees and uh, yeah. explore these different technologies that, you know, interwork with each other and, and provide a really com 
um, well, complex or simple solution, really, whichever one you want at a different price point. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And with the radar technology, um, obviously it's been uh, very difficult with the lockdown, but mm. radar technology is ideal for actually getting it out there. We've got a nice little demo unit tripod, uh, radar panel on there, um, PTZ camera, so we can actually take it out, all battery powered, take it along with a laptop, set it up in an environment and show a customer exactly what they're going to be able to see with that, what they're going to be able to detect. Um, so they know before they start investing in the technology, what what it's actually going to do for them so it's an absolutely fantastic selling tool so if anybody's got yeah. any uh any applications out there more than happy at this moment in time to do budget costs through yourselves for that um can give proposals which will show anticipated detection areas and then taking it to the next step if a customer's interested in that then we can take it out and do a do a live demo with the system as well which is a great tool for letting people see the technology in operation no, I appreciate it. Thanks. And I think if people don't um, or need to know more, let's say, then obviously your email address is shown there. They can contact you directly or they can contact their local salesperson at DVS or webinar at dvs.co.uk where further information can be provided. There's, we've answered all the questions, so we're up to date on that, luckily. Um, outside of that, guys, I just want to say a big, massive thank you for joining me on the last three um like i said we will put something together for a four funks i think i'm gonna miss you guys too much otherwise but <laughs> other than that i really appreciate all the time and sort of effort you put into making these slideshows and you know coming on to deliver that with me so i can't thank you enough and hopefully we'll see the value in it moving forward so thank you very much guys thank you guys thank you thank you Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, guys, and thanks for the massively beneficial technical explanation on your, um, you know, you're as passionate as I am. So, yeah, really appreciate your time and effort on that. And de definitely, people would have learned something from today and the last two. So, can't thank you enough, guys. So, I think I'll love you and leave you there, and we'll um, we'll catch up for another one really soon. Thanks very much. Thank you. Nice one. Cheers, guys. Take thank you. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.